Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Theresa May's promise of a Brexit dividend for the NHS is coming under scrutiny, with one Conservative MP describing it as tosh. The PM said the NHS will, re will receive an extra £20 billion a year in real terms funding by 2024. That's an average increase of 3.4% every year for the next five years. So do the numbers add up and where will the money come from? Let's discuss this um, with Paul Johnson. He's in central London. He's the director of the Institute for Fiscal Studies. Paul, thanks a lot for joining us. So, is it utter tosh? <laughs> well, I mean, the key, the key thing here is that is a quite a significant promise of extra funding for the NHS, 20 billion at the end of five years, means that it's getting back close to its long run average increase uh, after a very tight eight years. Where's the money going to come from? That we, we don't know. One thing we do know is it's not going to come from something called a Brexit dividend. Because well, the Prime Minister says it is. Well, it can't because there isn't, there isn't one. I mean, the, if, if, for two reasons. One is a simple bit of arithmetic, which is that if you look through to 2023, um, because of the way we're paying the um, Brexit divorce uh, bill and because of the... Um, promises the government's already made to farmers and others that will carry on spending money that the EU spends in the UK, there is literally no money. The second and even more important point is that the government has already accepted that because the economy will be hit uh, by Brexit, that there'll be a negative effect on the public finances. There'll actually be at least £15 billion a year less to spend as a result of the, of the Brexit vote. So, in the end, this money will come from higher taxes or higher borrowing. There is not a Brexit dividend there for it to be paid with. So why would the Prime Minister come out and say there was a Brexit dividend? As she said, £350 million a week. It was on the bus. She says it's now £600, 600 million, um, a week. Well, this is playing with numbers. The 350 million a week number was always uh, false. Um, uh, that that isn't even the gross amount that we send to the EU. The net amount, uh, the gross amount, is nearer 250 million. The net amount's about 150 uh, million. Um, secondly, that 600 million a week number that she quotes is odd, given that she has said that the extra funding is 20 billion a year. Now, if I divide 20 billion by 52 weeks, uh, I don't get 600 million a week um, as, a, again, a simple bit of arithmetic. So I think there's um, some shenanigans going on there with, the, uh, with inflation uh, and so on. Uh, and as I said, there isn't, uh, certainly over this period, even from a pure, pure bit of arithmetic, there isn't additional money there from leaving the EU and in the longer term because uh, he's generally accepted including by the government that the economy will be smaller as a result of Brexit there'll be less in the way of tax revenues and therefore less money to spend we need to grow up and understand that if we want uh, an NHS which is getting better or in uh, and is uh, serving a bigger population we will have to raise taxes to spend on it not assume that money will come from somewhere else OK, so um, that's where it's going to come from. You say no Brexit dividend, it'll come from higher borrowing and higher taxes. But it is a 3.4% per annum rise for the NHS in funding, which is a good thing, isn't it? It's a pretty substantial amount after a very tight billion pounds is a lot of money. It's knocking on for 1% of the entire na nation's income, um, actually. Uh, just to put this into some kind of context it's probably it's the sort of number that you would have expected to come out of a pretty tough negotiation between the treasury who are reasonably worried about the where they're going to get that money from and the levels of borrowing it might involve and the department of health who would have wanted more uh, you probably want something more like four or five percent growth a year to really get the nhs fully uh, back on track and improving services. I think what, what this kind of number will get you is hopefully avoiding uh, winter crises, hopefully moving things somewhat back on track, but I don't think we can expect in three or four years' time to see a completely revolutionised um, NHS. This is the sort of money which will just about keep it on track, not make it vastly better. If you look at raising taxes, 
how do you make sure, well, how do you raise them uh, initially? Where do you look? And then how do you make sure that that extra money that is raised is ring-fenced and specifically goes to the NHS? Well, um, I mean, that's a very big question where, I mean, you could raise taxes from all sorts of places. We raise six or seven hundred billion a, a year. So this is in, in, in that context, uh, you could argue a relatively small proportionate um, increase, but it's still, it's still a substantial increase. So if you wanted that, uh, the sorts of things you could do is you could abandon the uh, cuts in corporation tax due over the next couple of years. That might uh, get you another five or six billion. You might um, stop increasing tax allowances uh, after they've met uh, manifesto commitments. That might get you another couple of billion over this uh, over this period. And then you've got the big taxes. You've got income tax, national insurance and VAT. Put a penny or two on any of those and you're beginning to get significant amounts of money. Obviously they may be uh, politically um, unpopular. So you've got all sorts of um, options there. And it is worth remembering that relative to most European countries, we actually, whilst it might not feel like it, we have a relatively low tax burden. How the government, how, how you show that that goes on the NHS? Well, I think, um, you know, if you're increasing spending and increasing taxes at the same time, that's a reasonably close tie-in. Um, over the long run, of course, you can't make the two uh, tie together. Over the long run, the amount we spend on the NHS is going to be largely independent of any tax changes which happen to get made uh, in the next budget. Now traditionally um, rises in NHS funding have come from cutting ancillary services. I mean can you see anywhere that cuts could happen? Well if you, I mean, uh, if you look over the very long run, if you look over the last 70 years or so, you, there's a pretty close relationship between cuts in defence spending and increases in NHS spending. So we've, we've essentially paid for the NHS and higher pensions and a bigger welfare state by very, very dramatic cuts in defence spending and some other areas like spending on housing. If you look over the last seven years uh, or so, actually whilst the NHS budget has been tight, it hasn't been anywhere near as tight as spending on other public services. So to some extent the health service has been protected by cutting everything else again. I think it's very, very hard to see that you could do that into the future. There's not very much uh, knocking around where you could just have billions more of cuts in order to fund the NHS, which is why I think into the medium term we're going to have to, um, uh, we're going to, have to recognise that more spending on health will mean more taxes, not, as we've had over a long period, less spending on other things. Okay, Paul Johnson, thank you so much. Thank you.